in part two of the unit four notes, we will be covering the particle nature of light. Considering light as a wave explains much of its everyday behavior, but it fails to completely describe aspects of light's interaction with matter. It cannot explain why heated objects emit only certain frequencies of light at a given temperature, or why some metals emit electrons when light of a specific frequency shines on them. Scientists had to create a new model in order to address these phenomena. When objects are heated, they emit a glowing light which corresponds to the average kinetic energy of the particles. Different colors correspond to different frequencies, wavelengths, and energies. You can see examples of this off to the right, where we have the heating coils on a stove and a horseshoe which is being heated. In 1900, German physicist Max Planck studied light emitted by heated objects and determined that matter can gain or lose energy only in small packets of energy called quanta. A quantum is the minimum amount of energy gained or lost by an atom. Planck showed that the amount of radiant energy absorbed or emitted by an object is directly proportional to the frequency of the radiation. By using the three equations shown below, we can solve for the energy, wavelength, or frequency when given sufficient information. There are two constants listed below. So here are our three equations. Our constants are the speed of light, which is 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second, and Planck's constant, which is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds. So in each of these equations, you'll have at least one constant. So in this one, we have Planck's constant, Planck's constant and the speed of light, and just the speed of light. For the next few slides, we are going to be completing checkpoint calculations using these three equations. Please write all of these solutions within your notebook. For number one, we are calculating the wavelength of yellow light emitted by a sodium lamp if the frequency is 5.10 times 10 to the 14th hertz. The first thing we need to do is write down what variables we are given and what we are looking for. It says that we are trying to calculate the wavelength. So lambda is equal to question mark. We are given the frequency. The frequency is 5.10 times 10 to the 14th hertz. Now in order for our units to actually cancel, I'm going to use s to the negative 1 or inverse seconds instead but that means the same exact thing as hertz. Finally, we are going to need the speed of light because the equation which has both wavelength and frequency in it is this one right here. So I'm gonna write down C equals 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. My equation is C equals lambda times nu. And I need to solve for my missing variable, which right here is my wavelength, or lambda. In order to do that, I need to divide both sides by new. And now I have a new version of this equation. Lambda is equal to C over new. So this is something that should be done at the beginning of each of your calculations. You need to pick out an equation and then solve for the variable which is actually missing. Now that my equation is solved for the correct variable, I can plug in my numbers. I have 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second, and I am dividing by the frequency, which is 5.10 times 10 to the 14th inverse seconds. Now when you plug this into a calculator, it is very important that since both of these are in scientific notation, you must use parentheses around each of your individual numbers as you are calculating. If you do not, the order of operations is going to be mixed up and you're not going to end up with the correct answer. Now when we divide these two, we should end up with 5.88 times 10 to the negative seventh. Now for our units, we have per second and per second, which are both going to cancel out. So I'm left with a unit of meters. And if you think about it, that should make sense because we are looking for wavelength. And wavelength can be measured in meters. 
Now this is perfectly fine for a final answer. But sometimes you might need your answer within a different unit. So let's say that this is a multiple choice question and all of my answers are in the unit of nanometers. So I might need to convert it. If I wanted to do that, I could do a metric conversion just like what we did in unit one. So I'll demonstrate that here. So I have 5.88 times 10 to the negative seventh meters, and I'm trying to convert this to nanometers. Meters would go on the bottom so that these two units cancel, and nanometers would go on top. Meters is larger, so that gets the one, and the conversion factor for nano is 10 to the ninth. Because this is multiplication with scientific notation, I would add my exponents. This will come out to 5.88 times 10 to the second nanometers or 588 nanometers. Both of these answers mean exactly the same thing. They're just in different forms because of the units. Now, another thing that is important to point out here you might notice that I have three significant figures in my final answer, but one of my two numbers only had two significant figures. These two constants do not count towards significant figures, since these are not uh, measured values right here. So you should round your final answers based on the significant figures of whatever number is actually given to you in the problem, which in this case is 5.10 with three significant figures. All right, number two, what is the wavelength? So we're looking for wavelength again. When you have an energy of 3.83 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. Well, in this instance, if I have an equation which has both energy and wavelength in it, it must be this one right here. So I am going to be using E equals HC over lambda which means I need to write down a few more variables here. I'm going to need h, which is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds, and c, which is 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Now this equation is not solved for the correct variable. I currently have energy by itself. I want lambda or wavelength by itself. I can do that by multiplying both sides by lambda and dividing both sides by energy. When I do that, lambda will now be by itself on the left and energy will now be on the bottom on the right. So again, in order to go from here to here, all I did was multiply both sides by lambda and divide both sides by energy. Now I have a version of the equation which I can actually use. H is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds. C is the speed of light, 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. I'm dividing all that by the energy, which is 3.83 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. As I plug these into the calculator, all three numbers must be in their own set of parentheses. Otherwise, the order of operations will be mixed up. My joules are going to cancel. The seconds are going to cancel. I'm left with just meters, which again makes sense because I'm looking for a wavelength. So as I plug all this into my calculator, I should end up with 5.19 times 10 to the negative seventh joules. Again, for significant figures, I am going based on whichever number was actually given to me in the problem, which had three significant figures. All right, for our next checkpoint questions, we are going to be trying to cal calculate the frequency this time. So calculate the frequency, that is my unknown. When we are given a wavelength, of 5.00 times 10 to the negative eighth meters. My equation with both of these two variables in it is C equals lambda times nu, which means I'm going to need C. 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. 
From here, I need to solve for my missing variable. This is very similar to the one that we did on the previous slide. In order to get nu by itself, I could divide both sides by lambda. So now I've made a new version of my equation. Nu is equal to c over lambda. And I can plug in my two numbers. So I have 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second divided by a lambda, which is 5.00 times 10 to the negative eighth meters. Parentheses around both as I plug them into my calculator. When I plug everything in, I should get 6.00 times 10 to the negative 17th inverse seconds, or s to the negative 1. Now there is another question associated with this where it says, in what region of the electromagnetic spectrum is, the, uh, is this radiation? Now you could look at this from either the perspective of the wavelength that they gave you originally, or the frequency. So if you were to actually look at the wavelength, you want an exponent of 10 to the negative eighth power, well that would fall within the ultraviolet range. So you would just have to look at the exponents along the chart if you were asked to figure that out. For number two, we are also looking for a frequency, but this time we are given an energy. 2.43 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. Because we have energy and frequency, we are going to be using this equation. That means that we need to fill in Planck's constant. 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th, joules times seconds. I need to solve for my missing variable, which means dividing both sides by Planck's constant. Nu is equal to E over H. My energy was 2.43 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. And Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds. As I plug this in, my joules are going to cancel. I'm left with one over seconds. And if I were to plug this into my calculator, I would end up with 3.67 times 10 to the 14th inverse seconds or hertz. All right, so for our final set of checkpoint questions, we are now going to be calculating the energy. Since our energy is our unknown, that is the question mark. We are given a frequency this time of 6.32 times 10 to the 12th inverse seconds. And since I need both energy and frequency, I must be using the first equation, E equals H times nu. That means I'm going to need H down here. So 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds. You might notice this time that energy is actually already solved for. So I don't need to move any of the variables around. I could plug in my numbers directly. I start with Planck's constant, and then I'm going to multiply by the frequency that they provided me in the problem. So I have 6.32 times 10 to the 12th inverse seconds. The seconds are going to cancel, and I'm left with a unit of joules, which makes sense for energy. All right, from here, I multiply across, and I end up with 4.19 times 10 to the negative 21st joules. For my final question, I am still looking for an energy. But this time, I am given a wavelength, 1.9 times 10 to the negative sixth meters. Since I'm using energy and wavelength, 
that means I need E equals HC over lambda. So I'm going to use both variables this time, both of my constants. H is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds. And C is 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Energy is solved for, so I don't need to move any letters around. I can plug each of my numbers into the equation. So I'm going to start with 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds. I'm going to multiply by the speed of light, 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Now I'm going to divide by the wavelength, which was 1.9 times 10 to the negative 6th meters. When I plug all of this into my calculator, using parentheses around each of my three individual numbers, I end up with 1.0 times 10 to the negative 16th joules. That concludes part two of the unit four notes. When we come back for part three, we will be looking at the dual wave particle nature of light and the atomic emission spectra.